Hello mga students, welcome back sa ating channel. This video lecture here is the last of chapter 1. Okay? And today we will be talking about information system models. Ano-ano ba yung iba't ibang klase or iba't ibang mga modelo ng information system? So, in a gist, in a summary, ito po ang pag-uusapan natin. The manual process model, the flat file the database model, the RAYA, and then the ERP. Okay? So, umpisahan natin dito sa manual process na model. Alam po ninyo, at ito yung pinaka, syempre, from kung sa evolution perspective, ito yung pinaka number one. Ito yung pinaka una. And this is the oldest and most traditional form of accounting system. In what way? Because, guys, these manual systems constitute physical events, okay? Physical events na mga pangyayari, ano? Resources and personnel that characterize many business process. So, hinighlight ko po or in-underline ko po ito para i-highlight yung pinaka-konsepto ng manual process model. And ano bang mga example nito? O, basahin ko lang po ano, ano? This includes such tasks as order taking. Oh, meron ba kayong menu? <laughs> Wala po. Order taking. <laughs> no, sorry, ah, nagjo-joke si sir. Warehousing materials. No? Manufacturing goods for sale. Shipping goods to customers. Placing orders with vendors. O oh, ito ay mga physical processes. And these are part of the manual process model. But traditionally, this model also includes the physical task of record keeping. Okay? So, imagine po ano, yan po yung ating ano, uh, manual process. So, nakabase tayo sa mga physical events, resources, and personnel that characterize business processes. Our next here in the line is the flat file model. At yung flat file model, pwede natin... Well, actually, ano, kung i-imaginein po ninyo, para siyang yung distributed data processing na one organization or one subsystem or one function of its own, no? meron siyang sariling buhay. Because under a flat file model, it describes an environment in which individual data files are not related to other files. Although maaaring yung mga files na kinikip nila may also represent files that are also being kept by the other organization or other departments. But because of their independence, no, hindi po sila nagpapakialaman, they have no way of knowing if they have the same data needed. And this flat file approach is what we call and associated sa tinatawag natin na legacy systems. Okay? These are large mainframe systems that were implemented in the late 1960s through 1980s. Now, when we talk of mainframe computers, kasi ito yung mga pagkalaki-laki ng mga computers. Ano? In terms of computing power, mas malaki. No? Pero... In terms of their physical space, mas malaki din yung kinakain nila. Okay? Under the flat file model, end users in this environment own their data files rather than share them with other users. Okay? Thus, standalone applications rather than integrated systems perform data processing. O, pakita ko po sa inyo, ano, makikita ninyo yung ating example dito ng flat file. Tatlo po itong magkakahiwalay. The accounting here, the marketing on the uh, top right, and then, or actually middle siya, and then we have the product services on the bottom right. Oh, as you can see here, the accounting, meron siyang sariling billing accounts receivable system na nagkikater ng customer data, ng sales invoices, and cash receipts. Sa marketing, meron naman siyang system for product promotion. Gumagamit din siya ng customer data and sales invoices, kagaya ng accounting. So makikita po ninyo dito, no, they share the same. Pero no, because of the flat file model, kanya-kanya yan. Kumbaga, wala tayong pakialaman 
kung meron ka ditong sales invoice, meron kang customer data, edi bahala ka sa buhay mo. Basta ako meron din akong sarili. So kagaya kay product services, for ten, para sa kanyang service scheduling system, kumagamit din siya ng customer data and then product services schedule. So as you can see here, na, nagiging redundant. Although dito ano, for customer data sa accounting, current accounts receivable. Sa marketing, kailangan niya historic or demographic orientation. Tapos sa product services, kailangan niya din historic or product orientation. Okay? So, ang problema dito nga lang sa flat file is that may problema tayo sa data storage kasi madami yung kinakain. Pangalawa, data updating. O, ano ibig sabihin ng data updating? Kung meron kailangang i-update, let's say, o, sa, sa side ng accounting, i-update ko yung mga sales invoices. Ang ma-update ko lang is doon kay accounting, yung organization, yung group na yan. Eh dahil may sales invoice din dito sa marketing, hindi yan ma-update. So ibig sabihin, yung updating talaga naka per, per department, no per function. So nagkakaroon tayo ng problema. Baka kasi mamaya kailangan na rin itong i-update. But because there is no way of currently updating the sales invoice, si accounting lamang ang updated. Ito medyo na paglulumaan. So meron tayong problema din sa currency of information. And when we talk of currency of information, recent po ba yan? Hindi yung pinag-uusapan natin dito na currency is pera. Ano? Gaano ba yan current, ka-updated? Okay? So may link no, dito sa ating data updating. Oh, another problem with the flat file approach is task data dependency or the user's inability to obtain additional information as his or her needs change. So kalimangbawa, galing oh, yung ginamit ko sa sales invoice, galing ako ng accounting, tapos suddenly nalipat ako ng marketing. Eh dahil ito yung aking information dito, hindi updated, kagaya, hindi kagaya ng kay accounting. So meron tayong task data dependency because oh, in meron kang inability to obtain additional information. Kasi dito, medyo meron kang konting limitation. No? Hindi ka pa rin updated doon. Oh, meron tayong data redundancy. Okay? Hindi ko lang ito na-highlight. Ano? Oh, yung problem natin is more of data redundancy pero ito yung mga loob naglalabasan. Pag sinabi natin data redundancy, nadodoble po yung mga information na hindi naman dapat madoble. Kung sakali na ibang model yung ginagamit natin. Kasi dito, duplicate yung sales invoice kay accounting, kay marketing. Customer data, oh, triplicated. Ibig sabihin tatlo, ano, ang gumagamit. Pero magkakaiba yung need nila. Eh baka pwede naman kasi na pagsamahin na lang yan. Now, to combat that issue, dito papasok si database model. Kasi under a database model, central yung location. No? Meron tayong central database. Ito kasi kanya-kanya sa flat file. Dito naman, centralized yung data processing. Kumbaga, no? So, yung users, lahat ng users, pwede nilang ma-access. Ito. So, pwede natin itong pagsamahan into one database para si accounting, si marketing, si product services, ma-access nila ito kapag na-update yung sales invoice, updated na rin yung kay marketing. Unlike dito, na sa flat file na kapag in-update yung sales invoice, hindi mahisushare kay marketing kasi may kanya-kanyang mundo sila. Unlike dito po ano, sa database management system, oh, ang nagiging ano na lang dito, control para ma-secure yung information is doon sa data access. Okay, meron tayong lahat ng mga files no available in a central location. How do we make sure na hindi po ito ma-abuse? Eh di, yung sa pag-grant ng access, sino ba dapat yung pwedeng um-access ng information, mag-access ng database? So, the access is controlled. Okay? Now, tignan po ninyo ito. Ano? And this is the most striking difference between the database model and the flat file. Meron kasi tayong pooling of resources. So yung customer data, sales invoice, cash receipts, product service schedule, at iba pang mga information, pinagsama-sama na po natin. 
And meron tayong integrated software which is your database management system para kung anong kailangan ni accounting, ni marketing, at saka ni product, yun lang yung ma-access na dito sa shared database. Okay? So meron tayong control of information because meron tayong centralized location. So that is the database model. It eliminates data redundancy. Pag nag-update ka, isa lang, hindi mo na kailangang i-update yung iba pa kasi ang ina-update mo is your centralized uh, your central ano no, central file. And then updated, up to date, no, current yung mga values ng information na yan. Okay? Oh, next one, we have the REA model. And REA stands for resources, events, and agents. Ito po ang ibig sabihin ng REA. Okay, the REA model is an accounting framework for modeling an organization's critical oh, ayan po, resources, events, and agents. At saka, yung relationship nila sa isa't isa. Now, once specified, both accounting and non-accounting data about this phenomena can be identified, captured, and stored in a relational database. Oh, from this repository, user views can be constructed that meet that meet the needs of all users in the organization. The availability of multiple views allows flexible use of transaction data and permits the development of accounting information system that promote rather than inhibit integration. O, wala lang yata akong example dito. Ano? Sa, pero later on, mas mauupuan po natin itong REA model. Meron tayong additional visuals. Pero... Hindi nga lang po muna dito sa ating sa pagkakataon na ito sa video lecture na ito. But suffice, let it suffice that the REA model stands for an accounting framework na naka-focus naka naman sa mga resources, events and agents. Pag sinabi natin na resources, oh, yung economic resources, mga assets ng organization. And these are objects that are both scarce and under the control of the enterprise. If you remember that the definition of asset, di ba? Meron tayo dong controlled by the organization, di ba? Nandito din po yan. Yan din mismo yung definition. Ang, yun nga lang po, under this REA model, yung definition ng asset departs from the traditional model kasi hindi natin sinasama dito yung accounts receivable. Under this model kasi, AR is simply an artifact record. Isa lang siyang record na nag store at nagtatransmit ng data. Daanan lang siya. Kumbaga, magkano yung benta mo, magkano yung nakolekta mo, yung difference nila, that is your accounts receivable. Okay? O, AR values are derived from the difference between sales to customers and the cash received in payment of sales. O, so, yung ating mga events dito is your yung sales to customers at saka yung payment ng sales no and the difference of the value is your accounts receivable if there is a difference okay so yun po yung yun nga lang po ano ito yung difference natin dito sa model na ito now when we talk of events naman these are phenomena that affect changes in resources kagaya po nung nabanggit ko na rin dito ano ito na yung ating example the sales to customer is an event the cash Payment for the sales is an event. No? They can result from activities such as oh, production, exchange, consumption, and distribution. No? Economic events are the critical information elements of the accounting system and should be captured in a highly detailed form to provide a rich database. Okay. Now, samantalang agents naman, Ito naman yung mga individuals and departments. Oh, please take note. Hindi lamang individuals, kundi maging departments that participate in an economic event. And they may be parties both inside and outside the organization with discretionary power to use or dispose of economic resources. O mga example po natin dito ay sales clerk, production workers, shipping clerks, customers, and vendors. <coughs> okay? So those are the agents. Now, don't worry. Later on in the other chapters, ano, babalikan natin itong Rhea. Now, next, pag-usapan naman natin yung enterprise resource planning. 
or the ERP. Now, the ERP is an information system model that enables organization to automate and integrate its key business processes. Now, familiar naman na po kayo dito, ano, naririnig na po ninyo yung ERP or sa ibang mga subjects ano, nabanggit na ito. Let's say for IT application tools. Oh, but as an additional, this is an information system model that enables the organization para i-automate at i-integrate ang mga key business processes. It breaks down traditional functional barriers by facilitating data sharing, information flows, and the introduction of common business practices among all organization users. Oh, familiar naman na kayo with SAP, with Oracle. I'm not sure if you have heard Baan, JD Edwards, PeopleSoft. Okay, pero ang pinaka-common at familiar dito is SAP and the Oracle. Ano? They are ERPs. And ERP packages are sold to client cost uh, client organization by modules. Kasi usually ano, um, by modules din ito binibenta. And they support standard processes. For example, ito, asset management, financial accounting, HR, industry-specific solutions, plant maintenance, production planning, quality management, sales and distribution, and inventory management. Marami po yung modules na pwedeng ibenta sa'yo. Pero usually kung maliit ka na company, kailangan mo lang, let's say for SAP, kailangan mo lang naman ng accounting. No? So financial accounting, maring ito yung ibebenta lang sa yung module. Yan lang yung access mo. Pero sa, kab sa katunayan, marami pang ibang mga modules na pwede mong i-explore, pwede mong i-access, pwede mong magamit sa company. Pero yun lang yung binili mo, kaya hanggang doon ka lang. Okay? So this is uh, the last uh, information system models that we will be discussing. Okay? Now, for the last item here, role of accountants. Oh, please take note, if you are an accountant, you can be a user user of the information system, you can be a system designer. So not necessarily the programmers, ano, kung hindi, as part of no, uh, consultants no, na nag advice paano ba dapat ang itsura nito. More of the conceptual design, not on the technical one. Or may, to make sure that the actual design ano, is what was intended. So you can work hand-on-hand -hand with the IT professionals para ma-make sure na tama yung dinidesign nila. Okay, system design is a collaborative effort between the users and the IT professionals. And please take note of the one I've mentioned in the previous video lecture yata yun, ano? Oh, Accountants as system auditors, you may be an internal or external auditor. No? Pag external auditing, pwede kang sa assurance or pwede din yung IT auditing. O, oh, or kaya naman, internal auditing, you can be an internal auditor. Or actually, pwede pa rin naman IT auditing, pwede rin yan maging internal. No? You are part of the organization. Okay? So, yan po, ano, guys. Plus, please, please let me know if you have questions no, on our last topic sa chapter 1. I hope meron po kayong natutunan. Kung meron kayong mga questions or medyo kailangang i-clarify sa topic na pinag-usapan natin, oh, don't hesitate to ask me. Ano, Paulit-ulit ako but that is necessary for me to know if you have any question or if you learn something. I'll see you on the next chapter, the next few video lectures of the next chapter. Until then, bye-bye.